a consulting company uh, that deals with uh, commercial and, and business uh, entities, and also a, a longtime active member of the um, state contractors uh, landscape. I, right. I messed that up. The California, California Association of Land Contractors. Right. Association. So, uh, let's just start with the with the basic premise here today. We've heard a lot about uh, you know various legislation about reducing costs by twenty percent by uh, twenty twenty. We've heard about um, various different uh, issues that we're facing. But let's just get down to the to a business owner or a commercial property manager in terms of the the real impact and the decisions that they look at and whether to invest in um, more efficient operations with their with their water. What's what's the starting point? Where do you where well, do you get into for, this? For anyone who is responsible for a piece of commercial property or homeowners association, the first place to start is to understand what the size of the landscape is and what your landscape water budget could be or should be. So you need to start with a landscape water budget. Right, and you're going to be talking about budgets and also audits, right? So We're going to be talking about how to do a budget, how to get one through the internet anywhere in the state of California. Uh, the next thing that people need to do once they establish what the budget is, is they need to look at their historical water use records for the last two or three years to see where they are, what their baseline is. Uh, once you have a budget and you have a sense of where you are, then the task is to begin to move to, to narrow the gap, to, uh, to arrive at the conservation that, that you're desiring. Right, sort of a matrix between what your, what your utility bills versus what are you paying in some cases for contracting and landscaping services. Uh, that's right. Uh, probably the most beneficial thing we'll talk about this afternoon is how a property manager can um, begin to track this on a uh, uh, short turnaround basis and how to know whether or not their landscape water manager is actively managing the water. There are certain kinds of behaviors that a water manager engages in that a property manager can expect and see reports and, and uh, practices that are uh, in line with water conservation and that really is going to help a landscape uh, owner uh, make a selection and, and uh, choose a good water manager or get his landscape manager to upgrade his skills. Right, so in, in one of the presentations earlier we saw how a, a company operating at about 50 percent efficiency for water use now would need to be operating at about a 70 percent efficiency to meet the requirements by 2020. What kind of savings does that uh, amount to? Is that a, a, a direct correlation that your costs would go down, you know, 20% or so as you as you increase that efficiency, or the cost going to well, be? Well, the uh, savings, if you are trying to save that amount of water, that works out to about a 40% saving. Uh, it's important to understand that it's not um, a, uh, a savings that you get to put into your pocketbook, what you're trading is water management for water waste. So you pay for the water management. One of the uh, strongest uh, recommendations that I have to deliver today is that you need an active water manager on the site uh, observing on a routine basis the uh, performance of the irrigation system, doing some tests, and that does cost money. Um, we believe that in uh, most cases, particularly on a larger piece of property, there is still net savings to the owner, um, but there is a cost that's an ongoing cost to pay for the water, the active water management, and hopefully that's a choice the owner's comfortable making. Right. Okay. Well, we've been visiting with Scott McGilvroy of Water Aware. We are here at the Success Without Excess uh, Water Symposium. We'll be back with another guest in just a minute. Thank you, Nels. Thank you very much.